UFC Vegas 85 is coming up in a couple weeks, and today, guys, I have the complete betting guide for you with timestamps, by the way, if you'd like to skip to any particular part of the video. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I am your guy with too many YouTube channels, and welcome back to, like I just said, guys, another betting guide video. Today, we're going to be going through the confident picks on the full card, underdog opportunities, fights that you should avoid, lock of the week, prop bets, potential parlays, and we are going to close out the video after that. Again, guys, timestamps are there if you'd like to skip to any particular part. Let's get into it. Before we get into the confident pick section, guys, these are the official bets that I did place for UFC 297. If you are interested, I do have a channel membership if you're looking to see what I'm going to be putting. Actually, like I'm because I talk a lot about betting in this video. If you're interested in seeing where I'm actually putting my money, where my mouth is, the channel membership is very cheap compared to other channels. And every single Thursday or Friday before a UFC event, occasionally I will bet on another organization, but typically for UFC, I will be posting the Thursday or Friday each week what I will actually be betting on in the community tab section for channel members. Now, this is what I had to say for UFC 297. Well, I'm not going to read it to you. You can see there, but I was very worried about this card. I expressed that in the betting guide. I expressed that in the full card bre breakdown video that I did. There's a lot of really, really close fights here. So I wasn't too confident in the bets that I placed, and I made that very clear in the vid videos that I made and in this post here, but we did a great job. <laughs> so the biggest one, which was really nice, a three fight parlay with Jasmine Jastavacius, Priscilla Cachoeira over 1.5 rounds, simply the co-main and both the main event. I was fairly confident in all of that hitting, which was very nice. Another single bet just in case it, it ended up going well, which was Raquel Pennington versus Mayra Bueno Silva over 4.5 rounds. And that actually was phenomenal because I got just about double my money for that. That was absolutely beautiful, but then I did the same thing for over 1.5 rounds in case something went wrong there. Had another single bet for Jasmine Jastavacius versus Priscilla Cachoeira going over 1.5 rounds, and I was sweating through that one, man. I was sweating through that one. I had another single bet with Movsar Evloev to win, which was very risky. Did end up hitting. The fight was back and forth, so it was very risky. And then I put another single bet jumping on an underdog opportunity for Mark andre Burial to win. As I was thinking about it, I was thinking more so that... Mark andre style could present a problem for Chris Curtis, but he didn't fight like himself, man. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there, but regardless, regardless, we had a very, very successful night, guys. Again, if you're interested, the channel membership is very cheap compared to other channels. Let's get into the confident picks for today. It is important to note, guys, that while these are picks that I'm going to briefly explain, I did make a full card breakdown and prediction video going like really, really as deep as possible into all of these fights. So I'm not going to spend time breaking down every single fight, just giving you a brief reason as to why these are confident picks of mine. So the first one's going to be Themba Greenbow for two reasons. Pete Rodriguez isn't a good fighter. Pete Rodriguez took this fight on short notice. Themba Greenbow has shown a lot of potential and is improving. And Pete Rodriguez, he is just a glorified powerhouse. That's pretty much it. I really, really like Themba Greenbow in this matchup. Then we have Thomas Peterson taking on Jamal Pogues. Thomas Peterson is a big heavyweight that has shown a lot of skill once he comes and grabs you. He wants to trach you, really drag you down to the ground. And I shouldn't have said a lot of skill because he does have skill behind some of the stuff that he does. But I just, he's really, really overwhelming. And I don't think what I've seen from Jamal Pogues really presents a problem to what Thomas Peterson has able, been able to do so far. And I think Jamal Pogues is just one of those fighters that's a little bit better than the bottom of the barrel heavyweights. And I think Thomas Peterson is a little bit better than that. So Thomas Peterson's another confident pick of mine. The next confident pick I have for you guys is Viviane Arujo taking on Natalia Silva. This one, in my opinion, is she was almost lock of the week. If it wasn't the women's flyweight division, she would have been lock of the week. Natalia Silva has been showing miles to be miles ahead in the skill level than the vast majority of the division. I like, I really like watching her fight. The only worry that I have is sometimes it does take her a couple minutes to get going in the fight. And that's when Arujo could like perhaps shoot a takedown or something like that. But regardless, Natalia Silva is just so much more skilled than Viviana Arujo. I wholeheartedly believe she's going to win this fight. All right, guys, let's talk about some underdog opportunities. It's important to note that these are underdog opportunities. These aren't necessarily picks of mine. It's just if you're looking for underdog value for your bets, it wouldn't shock me if the underdog won in this in this scenario. And the first underdog is going to be Charles Johnson. At the time of recording this video, he is a plus 230 underdog. I don't mind his chances for that money just because as at maximum, was a little bit, he's still, he's still a very good fighter, don't get me wrong, but he's a little bit overhyped than everybody thought when he was coming into the UFC. This dude, he has all the skill in the world, but he does get hit a fair amount. And what is Charles Johnson very good at? Hitting you. He can finish you. He can pepper you up. He can really take the win out of you. Charles Johnson is a very underrated fighter. I know he hasn't been able to put it together in the last three fights, and that's the big worry because 
as that maximum could absolutely come in and wrestle. But if Charles Johnson clips him, I can see it going his way. Now, guys, for the next underdog opportunity I have for you, it's going to be Mahmoud Muradov. And I'm not going to spend too much time breaking this fight down because it comes to something very simple. And I will say it before. First of all, I want to say he's a plus 240 underdog at the time of recording this video. So long story short, I believe this to be a high-level prospect matchup. I believe both guys to be very, very good, very strong. And I wouldn't shock me at all if this fight went either way. I am going to pick Kryzryev to win this fight. But Murdov is very good himself. All right, guys, let's talk about some fights to avoid. Fights that I believe you should not be betting on. The first one's going to be Molly McCann versus Diana Belpita. Very low-level women's flyweight fight. You have Molly McCann, who's so inconsistent, just talks tough, doesn't back it up. And you have Diana Belbita, who's has her eyes glued to the floor, throwing shots like a child. I don't like either of them. Well, I mean, not to say I don't like them personally. I don't like either of them as fighters, as picks, anything. This fight could go completely either way. The next fight I don't think you should be betting on, guys, is Gilbert Urbina versus Charles Radke. Now, the reason that I say this is because the likelihood that this fight goes to the ground is very, very high. And when this fight goes to the ground, I'm not so sure who's going to have the advantage down there. On paper, it probably would be Radke, but Gilbert Urbina is a very, very good on the ground himself. It's just really tough because Gilbert could expose Charles Radke's past as in we've seen him gas before, but Charles Radke also is very, very dangerous on the ground, takes you down, wants to throw up some submissions. He's very good at what he does. I just think there's a lot of different ways this fight could go, so I'm not going to touch it myself. And guys, the next fight that I don't believe you should be betting on is Hanato Moicano versus Drew Dober. Actually, one reason for both guys. Hanato Moicano is coming back after a long, long layoff. He was very injured. We don't know how the training's been going. We don't know how the recovery's been going. We don't know if he's going to have any ring rest. We don't know how he's going to show up on fight night. And I actually have a problem with Drew Dober as well. That being, we still don't know how his chin is. It finally got cracked against Matt Frivola. And then I was really worried moving on to his next fight because you, you've seen it a lot. Once some fighter gets cracked, their chin is never the same. In his last fight against Ricky Glenn, he didn't really get hit. So I'm not satisfied myself with Drew Dober still having the chin, the granite chin that he's always had. So I'm going to wait to see if he actually gets cracked and he can walk through it as Drew Dober usually does. So there's a reason on both ends here that I'm completely going to stay away from this one. And for the last fight that I don't believe you guys should be betting on, and guys, honestly, it's I'm not I don't have too much to say about it. It's Roman Delize versus Nasruddin Imavov. This is a high level fight in the middleweight division, and it both guys are very very good. I can see them both winning. <laughs> I wish I could break down more for you, but man, like I they're both great fighters. And this could go both ways. That's all there is to it. Now, guys, let's talk lock of the week. This is the fighter on the card that I believe has the most 100% chance or as close as 100% chance to winning that you can get. And I believe the most likely fighter to win on the card is Randy Brown. Randy Brown versus Muslim Salikov. Now, Muslim Salikov is a pretty good fighter. But I believe Muslim Salikov with his age showing now he's 40 years old. We've seen it. He's slowing down in his career. And Randy Brown is fantastic at using his range. Randy Brown's coming off of a great win. Randy Brown has an 8-inch reach advantage. I would imagine he's going to stay keep, stay completely on the outside and pick Muslim Salikov apart, possibly getting a finish. I really, really like Randy Brown in this particular matchup. Muslim Salikov is good. I just think it's a matchup. I, I like Randy Brown a lot, and that's why he is my lock of the week. Now, guys, let's talk about some prop bets that I actually like. Because, of course, at the time of recording this video, they aren't up. But, of course, like usually for every single card, there is the same type of prop bets. Now, I really do like doing women's fighters over 1.5 rounds. The problem is I don't think I'm going to do it with Molly McCann because her fight style can be quite chaotic same with honestly Luana Canarolina versus Julia Starlyorenko now I don't love it like I don't know if I'm gonna hit it I'll have to wait a little bit more and even Natalia Silva Natalia Silva can finish her opponents that's very interesting to me so the bets that I usually go I usually end up parlaying a couple 1.5 rounds together to get about double your money I don't really love that idea now so let's talk about like for round betting maybe some unders it's really tough. I could very well see Jiang Young Lee and Blake Builder going over 1.5 rounds. I don't mind that. <sighs> this is this card's a little bit tricky for the prop bets, isn't it? If I were to pick a women's fight to go over 1.5 rounds, it would be Natalia Silva versus Vivian Arujo, just because Natalia Silva at times really has her opponents in danger and doesn't go for the finish just because she wants to be safe. Great idea for a fighter, like honestly. And I do don't mind Roman Delita versus Nasser Dinimov because. That's a high-level fight. Both guys are so tough. I could very well see that being the case. I like 1.5 rounds for Azat Maxim versus Charles Johnson as well. I want to wait for the odds to drop 
on Randy Brown versus Muslim Salikov to see if we can get the under there. Same with Renato Moicano versus Drew Dober. I'll see what the odds are for these ones. And again, if you're interested, check out the membership if I'm actually going to end up placing a bet there. But only if there's some really good odds, I'll probably hop on some prop bets this week. But completely for fun, this is the fun section of the video, guys. Let's see what we can come up with some parlays. Let's just have a little bit of fun with it. So let's put Randy Brown in a parlay. Let's put Natalia Silva in a parlay. Let's put, what are we, we like, um, this is really tough. This is really tough because I don't want to, <laughs> I feel like we're missing a fight on here. Uh, let's put Thomas Peterson in there. Let's see, just see what we can get for the money. That's almost three times your money, but I don't really love all of those together. If you want to jump on both underdog opportunities, that being Charles Johnson, and what was the other one? Where am I? The underdog opportunity. Am I stupid? They must be missing a couple fights there. Either that or I'm just having a big blank in my hand over here. Regardless, Charles Johnson isn't too bad. So if you want to get super, super risky, we can go Charles. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no. Excuse me, guys. My apologies. We can go Charles Johnson. We can go, I don't mind the idea of Jiang Yang Li, like, but then again, Blake Builder just left such a bad taste in my mouth. Oh, actually, uh, Landon Quinozas isn't too bad of an underdog. I probably should have put him in the underdog opportunity section. Again, this whole thing's just completely for fun, guys. If you want to jump on to Natalia Silva's opponent, hey, it's women's division. Anything can happen there. But honestly, I'm not I'm not comfortable putting a lot together. Like, if you want to put Randy Brown, Thomas Peterson together, I don't mind that. That's double your money. What I am probably going to do myself is Randy Brown and Natalia Silva. That's about two times your money. If I want to bet like 20 on there, you get up just about 40. I don't mind that. That I actually probably will pull the trigger on. But again, I will make my official decisions later in closer on to the card, right? I am thinking about betting on Kreisriev. I'm thinking about it, man. But I can see Mahmoud Murdov winning this fight here. It's a very, very tricky card. But just, again, completely for fun. Let's see what we can do with with some of our picks. We're going to pick Azat. We're going to pick Kreisriev. We're going to pick Young Young Lee. We're going to pick Markel Medeiros. We're going to pick Julius Stolyarenk. I really don't like that fight. We're going to pick... Uh, we're going to pick Dolly, by Diana Belbita. We're going to pick Thomas Peterson. We're going to pick Natalia Silva. We're going to pick Gilbert Urbina, Randy Brown, Drew Dober, and Nasser Dinimov. That is 484 times your money. There is no way something is going to go right. All that's going to go right for this card. It's a very interesting card that you can put together, guys, honestly. What do you get for all the favorites? What do you get for all the favorites so far? Just out of complete curiosity here. What can we put together? But even at that's 200 times your money. And yeah, it, there's there's bound to have stuff going wrong here, guys. You can play around with it, honestly. And again, if you're interested, the, the official membership will have my official plays on there. But while we wait to see what my actual bets are, guys, check out this video on screen right now. It is a tier list video ranking every single one of my favorite moments from UFC history. Check it out if you're bored, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.